Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is for you foodies out there. People that are thinking about starting food photography or you've already started on the journey of food photography and you're lost in the sea of props. I'm going to go over five essential props that you need to get yourself started in food photography and the journey of the propping. Let's get into it. Let's get into this propping world. I'm going to put a link down below to a video I did on food photography props and it covers a wide spectrum of them and where you can get them and everything else. Today though, we're going to deal with what I feel is the first five essential that you really need to get yourself going on and get organized with. Now, as you start your propping collection, because that's basically what it is, you're going to start gathering a lot, a lot of props. Food photography, it's all the little details. As they say, the devil is in the details and food photography no exception to that so let's get into our first item that i feel is essential and that is your cutlery your knives your forks your spoons all your silverware that goes on the table it can have a huge impact on your image you see that spoon just sitting there just makes you want to reach into that pitcher grab that spoon tuck into that dessert that's what you want to do but one thing with all our cutlery small small little teaspoons Dessert spoons, you know, stir your coffee with dessert spoon, salad fork, dessert fork. You want to keep them small. Small in the world of food photography is a lifesaver in creating your setups. It makes it so much easier. Now, the other thing is the difference between this nice bright shiny and this dollar looking spoon. This is older. It's a, more of a vintage piece. It's quite old, but I love the patina and the texturing to it. This one I have to deal with the reflections, which gets a lot tougher. So one hint I would give to you, and you will learn as you go along, that some of the vintage pieces had huge impact to your image because of the style of the stuff, and you're not having to fight with reflections as much. So that's a good tip for you right there. All right, so that's kind of the cutlery world. Small, old, dull, looks fantastic. We need to put our food onto something. So. Our next essential item is plates. Now, look at the size of it. It's not very big. This is a sandwich plate, salad plate. You want to keep all your stuff small. And you want to try and keep a more of a neutral tone to it. I have a whole wide variety. This one has a nice blue trim on it. Again, keeping in with that neutral patterning. And this is about the biggest I tend to go in the plates. If you have too big of a plate, then what happens is you got a little bit of food in the middle and all the surface area around it. Or you need a whole lot of food to fill the plate. That's one reason why having smaller plates, smaller cutlery, smaller everything, you don't need as much food and it's easier to do your setups. All right, so that's a good point for you right there. And the neutral tones. What else do we need to put our food on? Bowls. Again, we've got more of the neutral paladin. This one has a bit of a blue in it, so it does make it a little tougher to uh, coordinate with some food items, but I still love this bowl, and I've used it quite a few times. The other thing with bowls is you don't want them too deep. If you've got a really deep bowl, it's hard to get light in there, and it's just not as friendly, and you basically only get the top down on it. So you want to try and stay as fairly shallow as you can. Now, again, everything small. And speaking of small, check out this little lineup of bowls and they have many different names from pinch pots, ramekins, whatever, all these little bowls and all different materials for it. You've got your bamboo wood here which gives you that more organic natural feel. You're doing something more high-end. Look at the texture on this crystal. You get some liquid in there, you know, maybe some honey in there and you got some light shining in behind and it just glows and it looks fantastic with this crystal with the texturing creates really cool effects. And you've got your standard little dipping bowls. These are great for when you're doing your food and you want to include some of your ingredients. Maybe you've got some nuts or berries or leaves or salts or sugars or something. These little bowls come in really handy and have a huge impact in your image. So always have a ton of these. And again, uh, fairly neutral, but I do have some in different colors. But it's something for you to be aware of. Now, one of my little nemesis here, is the placement of and dealing with napkins. <laughs> Gotta love the world of napkins. Again, I try and stay fairly neutral toned with them. 
again, because it helps balance everything out. I do tend to, whether it's because I'm a guy or not, but I do tend to pull into uh, some of the blues because I just love the way the blues look into it. Now, you want to try and stay with your, your linens. It's just has a bit more of that organic and natural look within your images and actually tends to lay a lot better than some of the polyesters that you've you got to iron the hell out of them sometimes to get them into the fold that you actually need, whereas the cottons and linens and stuff, it's just so much better to work with. Then again, wide variety of colors, styles, sizes. You can have it folded like this where you just simply have your plate and part of the napkin peeking out from underneath, or you're tucking a napkin simply into the corner of your image and it adds that little pop of color. It adds that little extra oomph into your image. So playing with napkins is fantastic. But placing them and getting them to look right, sometimes I spend more time fiddling with them than I do anything else. All right, now let's get into our next one. And that's putting food on something again. Cutting boards. I can never have enough cutting boards. This one's actually big enough. You can actually use it. You know, you got a little ramkin like this with it on. There's your complete background right there. Not just something to put food on, but it becomes your whole background. But different textures and finishes of this. Now, I know you were probably thinking, oh, glasses. Nope. For me, it's cutting boards. And I have a wide variety of them. You know, I've got like this little paddle style. You know, just picture this with some garlic bread on, butter dripping down the side. Got a knife laying here all ready to cut it. These little cutting boards are fantastic for that stuff. And if I'm shooting food head on, I can use some cutting boards and put food on it. So it helps elevate stuff up in the image, especially when you're getting into some that are like this thick, it helps elevate stuff in the background of the image. Now, I tend to finish both sides of the uh, cutting boards. Even if you buy a brand new one, which basically this one was, I just stained the heck out of it, took a blowtorch to it to give some of the burning marks and then hacked it up with a knife. So I've got this side, and then this side's just a little lighter, and it's got the drip tray here, so if you've got something that's leaking, this is a perfect one for it. And again, I've hacked it all up, so it's got more of that weathered, more used look to it, and it just gives a bit more impact within the image. But I love using these in the food photography. It, for me, it just adds so much more. If I was gonna add the sixth item, it would be glasses, because a drink in the background has a lot of impact to it. But for me, it's the essential. I mean, I've got my plates and bowls and various sizes. I've got my cutlery. I've got napkins. And I've got my cutting boards. For me, that's the essential stuff you need to get yourself really going within food photography. And then you're going to expand your color palette. You're going to expand your propping to candle holders, to sugar bowls, to glasses, bottles, all kinds of stuff. You're going to be just inundated. You're going to need more shelving and more room to store the props for food photography than I think any other kind. This to me was the essential, the stuff you needed to get yourself going and start building that collection to begin your food photography career. All right. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. So, until the next time.